Welcome to the next episode of Decans with D. I am Dietmar Ostermann and I'm the regular guy from Long Island. French wine. The best of the best. This is part two of our introduction into French red wines. In part one, I introduce the region of France to you and all the little sub-regions and we pointed specifically to Burgundy, Bordeaux and the Rhone Valley and then we went deeper into those sub-areas. Now in this part two we will taste those wines. So let's check out how those wines taste and drink. Let's dive into the French Burgundy first. We are decanting these French beauties. So here is the Bordeaux. I can already see by the color, the color is lighter. We will see much darker colors both for the Bordeaux as well as for the Rhone wine. So this grape is the Pinot Noir grape that we find in the Burgundies. I mentioned extensively Merlot and Cabernet are the dominant grapes in Bordeaux, but for the Burgundy it's Pinot Noir. So 60% uh, of my viewers come from the United States. So if you compare it to the US vines, it's very comparable to the California or the Oregon Pinot Noirs. Of course, French Burgundies are much more important worldwide. Uh, but the climate in Burgundy is very comparable to the climate in Oregon. That's why so many of the French winemakers came to Oregon, bought themselves a vineyard or cooperated with existing vineyards and became winemakers there. So the wine looks great, very solid color, but a little bit see-through. Light lines in the glass indicating not very high alcohol content. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Clearly cherry, sour cherry, black cherry. That would be very typical fruit for a Pinot Noir. Overall, very pleased with the aromas. Let's shake it a little bit around to get a little bit more oxidation going. And then we give it a whirl. Initially on the early palate, very pleasing full volume, still cherry fruit, still a bit of dust. Uh, the moment you get it into the back palate, it becomes a little bit of a bitter bite on top of it. Some acidity is still in there. The Pinot Noir wines would be typically more uh, acidity rich. They are typically not as full bodied as a Bordeaux, more medium bodied wine and that comes out in the palate as well. The, uh, it's dry wine, um, but um, quite smooth, quite acidic. The finish is a little bit disappointing. I would have wished it would be a little bit longer. The aromas were great. The uh, forefront palate when I had the wine in the mouth first were a good combination of fruit, good combination of acidity, fresh wine. I liked it a lot. When I put it into the back palate and when I swallowed it, I wasn't as impressed with it. So I give this wine a 3.9, 4.0 on Vivino in my scale. Looking here quickly, the average Vivino rater has it at 3.8 and Wine Spectator has it at 92. And by the way, I did use a big bowl burgundy glass. I'm now using a smaller bowl, more long Cabernet glass for the Bordeaux. Let's open this uh, Chateau from Brage up, 2015. Not one of the top five growth, but one of the other 650 beautiful chateaus in Burgundy. Okay, same thing here. We are going to decant. I can already see the color is a lot darker. 
And by the way, if you didn't see my decanting wine video, I am decanting here in order to give the wine a chance to oxidize more. It is typically not as needed for the Pinot Noirs, but I would always recommend it for Bordeaux wine. Okay, lot darker color. Here we go. Much more lines in the glass, much darker color, very good looking color. I like dark wine colors, ruby red. So there's more alcohol content in this uh, Chateau from Barge from Bordeaux than there was in the um, Pinot Noir. It looks to me like probably 14, 5%. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Hints of uh, blackberry, potentially even some blueberry. Yeah, this is a nice Saint Emilion Bordeaux wine, 14.5% alcohol. The majority base of this wine is Merlot. It's 95% Merlot and 5% Cabernet Franc. No Cabernet Sauvignon in here at all. Let's give it a whirl. Beautiful. This wine is still young. Would love to drink it in five years from now, after I had had maybe 10 years in its belt. A lot of fruit on the palate. It's a combination of red food and black food. So there's some cherry in here, but also some blackberry in here. Very nicely balanced on the palate. No wild eruptions left right and center. It's like a classic uh, French Bordeaux type of feel on the tongue. Uh, the finish is medium, uh, much more pleasant than um, for the um, Domaine uh, Joseph Faberlé. It is less acidity and that makes the finish so much more pleasant right now. But I can feel the alcohol, there's a little bit more alcohol, very good. So this is a substantive wine, which you would uh, drink with a much more substantive uh, meal. Whereas I would uh, prefer to do the burgundy with a duck or with a turkey. Coming up right now during turkey time. Oh. I do a um, Bordeaux with a steak. I would love to drink a Bordeaux with a lamb roast. Uh, I can even see it going well with pork. Um, Overall, I give this Chateau from Brasch a 4.2. I'm more pleased with it overall, um, giving the contacts than I am with the Burgundy. Great wine, recommendable. And now I am opening up the last contestant, the Rhone wine, Chateau Neuf de Pop. This is a 2016. 2016 was a great year for Chateau Neuf de Pop. Just like 15 was a great year for the Bordeaux region. And this one we will decant as well. But before, I'm going to show you the bottle one more time. 2016 Domaine de Borinard, Chateau Neuf de Pape, in the region around Amiens, Southern Rome. So the grape that goes into a Chateau Neuf de Pop is a Grenache grape, completely different grape, wildly planted in Spain and in France. Okay, here I'm using the first glass again. Let me wash this out with a new wine, just a little bit. Okay, here we go. Okay, the color is dark, probably color-wise in between the two other ones, but much more closer color-wise to the Bordeaux wine. It's dark and it has a fair amount of legs. This indicates to me again higher alcohol content, probably close to 14.5% as well. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. I would say blackberry, maybe some plum in here. I can uh, smell some of the tannins. There will be a lot more tannins in here than certainly was in the um, 
in the Burgundy wine. Overall, very pleasant aroma, but all of those three French classic wines were much more elegant in the back with the aroma. Let's give it a whirl. Brilliant. It does have more acidity in it than I thought it would be. Fresh. Um, it's obviously also the youngest, 2016. There's on the palate uh, a good blackberry flavor. It has some bite of tannins in it, in addition to the acidity. The finish is longer than the other two wines. Again, a much more heavy wine. This is um, actually a combination of Ganache grape and Mouvredi grape. Medium to high body, medium to high acidity, and medium to high tannins. Less tannins in the other two wines. More body also in the Bordeaux, less body in the Pinot Noir from Burgundy, but a lot more acidity. So I give this um, uh, Chateauneuf de Pop also a 4.2. I like it quite a bit. The scoring here was Wine Spectator gave it a 93 and the average Vivino rating is 4.2. On the Bordeaux, Wine Spectator gave it a 4. Point, excuse me, a 91. Average Vivino rating 4.1. And for the Bordeaux, Wine Spectre gave it a 92, and the average Vivino rating 3.8. My ratings, 3.9 right here, maybe a 4.0, 4.2 and 4.2. I think there are, for the price point, better French Burgundies out there, so I give not a buy recommendation for this one. This one I had to acquire for $84. It's not worth $84 in my book. The Frambrage is $46, worth $46 every single time. I gave it a 4.2. So Frambrage is a buy recommendation as a French Bordeaux from me. And also a buy recommendation is the Chateauneuf de Pape, Domaine Borinat. That one I give it 4.2 and it's $45. So two great classic French wines, a Bordeaux and a Chateauneuf du Pop for under $50. And a little bit of an introduction into this enormous world of French wines. And I'm sure I haven't done it even a little bit of justice, but maybe you know now a tick more than you know before you watch this video. There is deep dive videos already out there or coming on each of those classic French wine types watch those as well. In the meantime, if you uh, want to subscribe to my videos, right here is a button. If you like my videos or this particular one, like it right here. And I see you, as always, next Sunday.